certain houses are not inhabited by the descendants of those who lived through the Blitz, those who had to suffer the asbestos filled tower blocks and poorly maintained open spaces. The new houses are overwhelmingly inhabited by the new Bangladeshi residents of Tower Hamlets. My old local pub, the Bricklayer's Arms, is now a pile of bricks. Even the local synagogue, once regarded as a cathedral for the local Jewish population, has been converted to flats. As the old East End community dwindles in size and vigour, so the traditional East End pub is fast becoming a thing of the past. For example, the Green Man in Bethnal Green, which we used to use sometimes as a boozer, is now part news agents and part Asian fast food outlet. This is not an isolated example. Other pubs have been firebombed as their very existence is offensive to the local Muslim fundamentalists. The artichoke in Stepney, where we used to have branch meetings, is now boarded up as they have no customers. I've mentioned Brick Lane several times and here it is. Various nationalist groups used to sell papers here for 30 years or more on Sunday mornings. Indeed, it was probably the most famous nationalist sales pitch in the country. However, we gave it up in 1993 after the Millwall by-election as it had become inappropriate. We no longer wanted to be involved in providing street theatre and the whole Sunday pub drinking culture that then dominated British nationalism was very politically unhealthy. In any case, now there are precious few British people in the area to sell papers to. I was interested to see that the remains of nationalist stickers were still in evidence on the walls nearby, however. Walking through the market and listening to the babble of foreign tongues, I was reminded of a song sung in East End pubs by a comedian called Jimmy Fagg to the tune of Widdicombe Fair, or Old Uncle Tom Cobbley and all. He renamed it Whitechapel Fair, and it went... I went to Whitechapel to go to the fair, but I was the fairest one I could see there. Bus drivers, shopkeepers and locals and all, but I didn't see a Londoner at all. We laughed about it at the time. The East End is foreign to England now. It's an alien place for English people to live and there's no room for the old East End culture to survive. It's now a political battleground between rival Bangladeshi and other immigrant groups as was seen in the general election in 2005 when Labour lost a seat to a pro-Islamic party. Now I may sound like I've been talking about me in this film or just about the East End, but I'm not. I'm talking about all parts of this country. All areas of Britain either are now or will be in the very near future facing the same problems and challenges that overcame the East End. We've spent a lot of time during this film in cemeteries, which is somehow apt because the East End is a dead place, dead for the English people. The only white people left are some yuppies who merely live there temporarily. You have old people who have been rather tragically abandoned and left there. A very few decent types who can't afford to move. And you get some people who have effectively made their peace with the multiracial society and live a semi-criminalised existence. There's a Clint Eastwood film called The Outlaw Josie Wales, based on a book called Gone to Texas. It's set in Missouri after the American Civil War, when the local southern people were chased out of their homeland and forced to flee to Texas by carpet bag baggers and jayhawkers. Effectively in the East End today, there's GTE marked on the doorsteps, Gone to Essex. Because the East End, the, the white people, the English people of the East End have fled lock, stock and barrel out to Essex. There are important political lessons for us to learn with what happened in the East End. By the time we engaged in serious community politics and stopped engaging in the self-indulgent activities that characterised the 80s and early 90s, it was too late. We must apply these lessons in the other areas around London where it's not too late and in the rest of the country. Under Nick Griffin's leadership, the British National Party is engaging in a whole range of community activities to broaden our appeal, so there isn't just one narrow head that can be cut off, so we can broaden our appeal across communities across this country and develop ourselves and protect our communities. We have modernised the party and we're coming fully equipped to deal with these situations and go onwards and upwards. We must never have a situation again where we allow one of our communities to decline and be destroyed in front of our very eyes.